Hello everyone, I'm Brian Mulligan, and this is Finishing Faster with Autodesk Smoke on ProVideoCoalition.com. Right now there's a big flux going through the editing community, and editors are trying you know, new systems out and new platforms. So the Final Cut Pro 7 users, the Adobe Premiere users, and the Avid Media Composer users are all sort of checking out each other's software in order to find one that you know, might work best for them. Well, another system that really deserves to be looked at is Autodesk Smoke for Mac. Now, Autodesk Smoke is really positioned as a finishing system. Uh, it's a place where you would bring in your rough cuts from Adobe Premiere or Avid Media Composer or Final Cut Pro 7, and you would bring in your XMLs, your EDLs, your AEF files, and you would conform your edit. Uh, you'd bring in just the clips that you used in that edit, and then you would go through Smoke's high-end finishing, so you would go through and do the keying and the painting and the stabilizing and fixing of shots and the 3D compositing uh, if you needed to. Uh, and you would really put the high-end finishing touches on your edit. But many people overlook the fact that you can actually edit in Smoke and it's a really good editor. It has all the functionality, if not more, of the Avid Media Composers and Adobe Premiere's and Final Cut Pro 7's. So you can actually do your creative editorial in it and your finishing sort of all at the same time. Now, I'm a broadcast editor at the NBC affiliate in Indianapolis, WTHR, and I've been editing on Smoke for over six years. Uh, I edit everything from scratch. I mainly do commercials and promo work, although I have done some long-form stuff as well. And the beauty of it is, is that I can actually do the creative editorial of a spot as well as the effects work and color correction sort of all at the same time. It's really fast, it's very fluid, and it's very easy to do. So it's definitely a software that really needs to be looked at. So what I'd like to do in this video tutorial is sort of show you some of the basic editing functionality inside Smoke so you can really see how similar it is to other editing systems as well as show you some of its unique features. Alright, so I've got some Canon 5D footage here. And you can see that it's uh, 1920 by 1080 and at 2997 frames per second. So the Smoke Edit Desk is broken into four areas. So you've got this top area here where your source clips are laid out and it's known as the source area. Uh, it pretty much acts like a bin. You've got the center area here where you've got your various tools for compositing and keying as well as trimming and editing tools. Down here in the bottom you've got the area where your record sequences are actually kept and edited, edited upon. And you can view your edits in a variety of mode by looking at the timeline, by looking at a collapse view where it just sort of plays like a clip. And then there are various other views that you can work into like storyboard mode where it'll give you the, the front and the tails of your clips for easy access. But for the most part, you'll be looking at the timeline or even the collapse view. And you can have multiple edit sequences down in this area. Over here on the left is pretty much where your edit desk uh, library is, which sort of organizes all of this. Uh, the green areas are sources, so they are your source areas. And right now we're looking at this one, and I can also view another source area with different clips in it. And you can have as many of these as you want, and you can actually organize them with folders and sort of group them together. So you can have virtually unlimited bins or, and ways to organize your sources as well as having various record areas uh, set up where you can have various levels of organization for your record edits. So right now we've got a blank empty area here with no uh, edits in it currently. So let's begin uh, our first edit. We can start by basically hitting new sequence and it will bring up an empty blank sequence. Now, now the smoke timeline will basically conform to the properties of the clip first edited into it. So if you put a 720p clip down here, then your timeline will become a 720p timeline. If you drop a 1080 2997 clip down, then your timeline becomes a 1080 timeline at 2997. If you drop a 24 frame clip down, it'll become a 24 frame timeline. So the timeline conforms to the properties of the clip first edited into it. So if we choose our source clip here, we can scrub along here as a small tile. If I swipe to the right with my Wacom tablet. Now this is the Smoke's uh, traditional uh, single viewer layout for editing. Uh, you can basically toggle between uh, your source clip and your record clip. You can hit F6 for source, F5 for your record area, and you can see where the border of the viewer turns red and green. And the timelines down here will also turn red and green and, and flip-flop. And you can also edit in Smoke in the traditional source and record layout. 
by going over to our uh, source layout over here, you can actually choose source record, and you'll get a traditional uh, source on the left and record on the right. And the same hotkeys to view your timeline also exist. If I hit F6, I'll still get my source timeline, and F5 will give me my record timeline, but I can still keep both viewers up here uh, at the same time. All right, so if I'm editing along, I can choose my source, and we'll choose this right where she's out of focus. And just like in every other editing system, there's multiple ways to do things. I can either set an endpoint here, or I can set it via the uh, keyboard shortcuts and set an out point. And I can either do an insert edit via a keyboard shortcut, or I can use the uh, tools here in between to do insert, overwrites, and replace edits. All right. So one thing to look at here, though, is uh, is our record edit pretty much just starts out with just a video edit with no audio channels. So what I need to do is check out my audio channels here for my source, and I can see that that's a stereo audio track. So what I want to basically do is add a stereo audio track for my record edit. So if down here I can see my audio plus, and if I hit alt and click that, I can actually get a stereo audio track uh, for my record. If I need another one, I can also add another one for later on if I want to do multiple audio channels. So now that I've got my source clip up here, I've got in and out points marked. And I can actually just do uh, an insert edit just by hitting insert. And down here, you can see that here's my record timeline. And now we've got our first clip set up here. Okay, so I can go to the end of this edit. I can start choosing another source. And like I said, either I can scrub them here in the tile, or I can swipe and I can even see it a larger view here in my, in my source and record view. And we'll pick the edit here. I can hit in via the keyboard shortcut, and out via the keyboard shortcut, and simply do an insert edit via the keyboard shortcut as well. There we go. So now I've got my two edits. I can hit play. And we're basically beginning our edit. The routing for where your audio and video clips are actually going to end up in your edit is pretty much done here on the left. You've got your green areas are your source routing, and the areas to the right are pretty much where they're going to go uh, on the record side. Uh, pretty much just like every other editing system. If I wanted to uh, turn off the audio channels that would come to this edit, I could just simply cl click them and uh, unhighlight them. And basically, uh, when I do an insert edit at this point, if I hit insert, I will just get a video track because we de uh, basically deselected the audio channels. All right, you can also do the same for the video side if you really wanted to. And if I hit insert now, I will just get the audio channels. All right, so that pretty much works like every editing system you've ever known. And it works the same way on Smoke. So if we find another source clip, I can swipe. We can grab this farm shot. I can do a swipe, look at it a little bigger. I can set an endpoint here, in and out. And if I position my edits here, I can do an overwrite edit by hitting here. I actually wanted to uh, make sure the routing is uh, on for my source clip. And if I hit overwrite, then this, the clip overwrites, just like you would expect an editing system to work. If I toggle back here to one of my edit points, and if I expand my timeline just a bit, you'll notice that there are these little M and equal signs on these clips. These clips basically are in sync. So the audio and video uh, are in sync with one another. So if I were going to, so if I want to do an insert edit at this point and push everything down, let's find a new clip. Right, we like this clip. Here's an endpoint. There's an out. So if I do an insert edit at this point, 
everything will ripple down. There you go, just like you would expect. Okay. So in your source viewer, you can also toggle back between any of the sources you used while you were editing. And you can see that they also retain their in and out marks. Now, we can also view our source clips by just simply opening up the edit desk library here, the source area in the edit desk library. And we're able to uh, look at the names of our clips and select them that way as well. If we need more information, we can actually toggle this little area arrow here to where we can actually see the time code in and out, the duration, the clip length, and all the other metadata uh, associated with this clip. And you can see that we can actually do a sub clip easily enough. So if we find a clip here that is a long clip that is a sequences of shots in here, we can actually break this clip up into various sub clips easily enough. So if we just set an endpoint here at the beginning, toggle through, set an out point, I can then do a sub clip. It'll ask me to name the sub clip down here, so we'll just put fire wide, enter, and now I've actually got a new fire wide clip right here in my bin or in my source area. If I do a swipe, I can see that now I have the, this sub clip right here that was based off of uh, its original clip. Here's the original one with all the clips associated, and here's just our short fire wide clip. So I wanted to do it again, I can select the clip, go back into it, we'll pick this shot, set an endpoint, I can use the keyboard, set an out, hit sub clip, and give it fire tight. And now I've got several different fire clips in my source area as sub clips. So there's a lot of different ways you can work with your source clips and get them onto the timeline and really start creating your edit. Uh, many people like the source and record way. Uh, and you can also go into the standard traditional one viewer layouts for smoke where you can see your source timeline, your record timeline, you can swipe, you can choose different clips, you can set in and out marks directly on the small clip here, hit insert, and we can build our edit that way. And we can organize our source areas uh, pretty much in any way we'd like. You know, if I wanted to create a new source area, or I can just add a new source area. I can label it Andrea. And I can go and select just my Andrea shots. And I can either copy them into this area or I can move them directly. So I can just pick them up, hover them over there, drop them in. And now I've got my five Andrea shots all organized this way. I can move these around. And if I want to, I can even create a folder for them, organize the folder as in uh, promo clips. And I can organize my clips into here. So I can really organize my clips any way I want. Uh, if I wanted to gesturally drag my clips down, I can select my shot and by simply hitting the copy key, which is F on smoke, I can actually drag and drop my clips down here. And you'll see you get a uh, little phantom insert. And when I drop it, it'll drop down with those in and out marks.
So that's a look at finishing faster with Autodesk Smoke here on ProVideoCoalition.com. So in my next tutorial, I'll be going over the basics of trimming inside of Smoke so you can really see how to finesse your edit. Thanks for watching.